I just want to speak about mentoring yeah. for a moment. And what attitude does someone need to have to get the best growth out of mentoring? Which one, the mentee or the mentor? Oh, well, let's go for both. That's good. That's a good. That's a good question. Let's do both. So let's start with the mentee. What attitude do they need to have for them to have that growth? Well, the first thing I always say to my mentees, I'm from the, I'm from the sort of school of hard knocks, so to speak, because I always say to them what how, what they achieve is up, it very much up to themselves. So when I meet them, I'm going to give them some guidelines, and they're generally quite broad and they're generally quite basic. But I would expect at the next meeting that they followed up on the things that I've said. And if they do, we have a great relationship. If they, sometimes I never see them again. And I'm talking about some very basic stuff. So I think the biggest thing that I can give value to a mentee is that once you've left your hotel, and they generally are from hotel schools, although not always, because I mentor some people who are not from hotel schools, is that it is really up to yourself. Your parents have got you this far. What happens from now on in, and there is a tendency to blame the hotel they're in or to blame their current boss or to blame their colleagues or blame their circumstances. I don't believe that if your circumstances are not working for you, then change them, whether it be your job or where you live or all that stuff. And I'm very adamant about that. So because the, a mentor's role is not to bring, is to encourage, to maybe cajole a little bit and provide some guidelines. But no mentor ever brought, ever brought someone from A, B to C. All they did is bring the best out in them. So for me as a mentor, I guess the fact I have the job title I have makes me a good mentor because um, I didn't have some of that level of seniority when I was at, of a similar age. So number one, the mentor by someone like me says anybody can achieve it. I mean, I'm an ordinary lad from Dublin who I did go to hotel school, but there's loads of people who went to hotel school or driving buses now. Doesn't mean going to hotel school gives you no guarantees, but it does say to people it's very accessible to reach the highest level in hospitality or anywhere else for that matter if you're prepared to work hard. Um, and as a mentor, I think um, I can share, you need to be able to share your experiences in a very, very open way. Um, but, and equally, but every mentor is slightly different. I would be maybe from, from a tougher um, type of mentoring than, but then equally, I want the students that I mentor to be of that ilk. I want the ones that want to be at a higher level. So I probably wouldn't be the most appropriate one for a student who has different sort of career aspects. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. So but I think it's to recognize and be empathetic to the student for where they are right now or the young person for where they are right now. Be able to adapt and recognize they're not actually you, they're not me. But I think the fundamentals are all the same. I will direct them around some books we've already talked about. Um, I will encourage them and support them. But I won't spoon feed them either because I think one of the differences with young people now that I didn't have was the internet. There's so much information out there. Information is not an issue anymore. You don't have to give anybody a book. They can buy, they can buy a book on Amazon for 99p or for free on Kindle. Actually, finding information 20, 30 years ago was actually more challenging. Now they've actually got no excuse for being able to develop their knowledge. So things like revenue manager is an area I mentor quite a bit on. The information is absolutely ready available. I've built most of my knowledge on revenue management from reading outside of the revenue meeting, just myself. You know, and the same information is available to all of them. So it's to encourage them to recognize that just because you've graduated, your education hasn't finished. In fact, far from it, because you won't be able to use some of the things you've had for another 10 years. But in the meantime, you can start filling in some gaps that you probably touched upon. Um, in fact, one of the students I mentioned from my school, Shannon, said to me, we didn't do any revenue management in Shannon. I know for a fact it's a module because... I take, I take the mickey out of the, the lecturer who I know very well and said, you know, so-and-so said there's no module revenue. I'm like, I'll kill them. Because, <laughs> you know, they absolutely have a very detailed model on uh, revenue management. And then they'll tell you they didn't have a module at all. But that's students for you. It's like, well, you had one, but you've forgotten it. But guess what? You now want to be one. So if you want to be one, you need to sort of catch up. Because the other thing I don't think that they sometimes recognize is that interviews are competitive. Mm -hmm. And just because you've done X, Y, Z, and you've been in a role for two years, when a position comes up, you're not going to automatically get it. In fact, we don't want you automatically get it. We will sometimes look outside. And guess what? The outside person sometimes gets it because they've got more desire than you. They've worked harder for it, and they're more knowledgeable. When you actually could have had that knowledge if you'd actually taken the time to actually build your subject. I'm, 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 I frequently find they don't build on their knowledge to the extent that they should. 
or they're working in the department. I'm talking about graduates here, and they're working at what I call entry level. I'm thinking you're a graduate. You should start now. Be more curious. Ask for more responsibility. And then you'll be in a stronger position in 18 months' time as and when a, a supervisory position comes up if you already are supervising. I think you did ask me if there a difference. I think one of the differences that might be is that they don't want to take on responsibility. I hate to generalise, but I think there is a little bit of a fear of taking on responsibility now. Stay within the guidelines a little bit more. I think I was told it was down to helicopter parenting and whatever that is, but um, that maybe they're afraid to take risks and that they want to stick within the the, the, the fine confines of the job role which when i was first moved into hotels our job roles were not very well defined <laughs> now today you were doing a wedding tomorrow you're doing something else and that was really good because you got exposed to and in some cases you had to make it up but you um you tended to overcome your fear yeah and and i think that's you've hit the nail on the head i think people not wanting to take risks or have too much responsibility yes. is the, they've got this fear of failing Yes. Um, but if they just twist it round into it's better to get into trouble for something you have done than something you haven't done, then that fear of failing kind of diminishes. But um, it is quite a common one that I hear of, of people shrinking who they are or shrinking what they want in case they are disappointed. And when you think about what disappointment is, it's thin air. It's not actually an injury on any level other than us feeling sorry for ourselves yes. and yet um so many people most people are avoiding that feeling of disappointment and limiting what they go for and um and also what they desire in case they're disappointed so right. you're absolutely right but fascinating but then don't kid yourself if you really really want to go to senior level and not everybody has to mm. recognize that's why the stakes are really important if at 27 you still want to be a ceo and you're still a junior supervisor, it may be time to realise that you're not pushing yourself hard enough or fast enough. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's ultimately your responsibility. Okay. Hi, I'm Lisa. I hope you enjoyed the film. If you did, please like and share. And if you've got any comments or any questions, just leave them in the box below and I'll come back to you there. Also, the links to my website, Power for Success, are below as well. Have a little look around there. And I hope you enjoy the channel and have a really lovely day.